general and particular solutions of a differential equation. At the end of this lesson, you will be able to explain the concept of general and particular solutions of a differential equation. Solve problems to verify the general and particular solutions of a differential equation. Introduction to general and particular solutions of a differential equation. Hello all, welcome back to our session. In our previous model, we discussed the basic concepts of differential equations. A differential equation is an equation with a function and one or more of its derivatives. Differential equations have a remarkable ability to predict the world around us. They are used in a wide variety of disciplines, namely biology, economics, physics, chemistry, and engineering. They can describe exponential growth and decay, the population growth of species, or the change in investment return over time. For example, imagine you are an archaeologist, and you find a bone in an empty land. The fragment of bone discovered contains 20% of the usual carbon-14 concentration. That is, the relative amount of carbon-14 in the bone has decreased to 20% of its original value. Say the value of carbon when the animal was alive. Using this information, how will you estimate the age of the bone? By using the information given, you can derive a differential equation of the situation. On solving the equation, we can find the age of the bone. Solution? How can we find a solution to a differential equation? Solution to a differential equation can be classified into two types. They are general solution to DE, particular solution to DE. Let us learn about those now. General and particular solutions of a differential equation. In our previous classes, we have solved equations of the type displayed on the screen. Name them as equations 1 and 2. Solutions of equations 1 and 2 are numbers, real or complex, and they satisfy the given equation. That is, when the number is substituted for the unknown x in the given equation, the left hand side becomes equal to the right hand side. Now, consider the differential equation shown on the screen. Name it as equation 3. In contrast to the first two equations, the solution of this differential equation is a function pi that will satisfy it. That is, when the function pi is substituted for the unknown y in the given differential equation, the left hand side becomes equal to the right hand side. The curve, y is equal to pi of x, is called the solution curve, or the integral curve, of the given differential equation. Consider the function given by, y is equal to pi of x, is equal to y sine of x plus b. Name it as equation 4. Where, y comma b, belongs to r. When, this function and its derivative, are substituted in equation 3, the left hand side of the equation becomes, equal to the right hand side. Thus, it is a solution to the differential equation 3. Let a and b be the given particular values. Say, a is equal to 2, and b is equal to pi by 4, then we get a function, as shown on the screen. Name it as equation 5. When, this function and its derivative, are substituted in equation 3, again, the left hand of the equation becomes, equal to the right hand side. Therefore, pi 1 is also a solution, for equation 3. The function pi, consists of two arbitrary constants a and b, and it is called, the general solution of the given differential equation. The function pi 1, contains no arbitrary constraints, but it has the particular values of the parameters, a and b. Hence, it is called the particular solution, of the given differential equation. Thus, we can say that, the solution, which contains arbitrary constants, is called the general solution primitive, of the differential equation. And, the solution free from arbitrary constants, that is, the solution obtained from the general solution, by giving particular values to the arbitrary constants, is called, a particular solution of the differential equation. For a better understanding, let us solve a few problems. Verify that, the function, y is equal to, e power minus 3x, is a solution of the differential equation, displayed on the screen. 
from the question, we have the function, as y is equal to e power minus 3x. Name it as equation 1. Now, differentiate equation 1, with respect to x. Name it as equation 2. Then, differentiate equation 2, with respect to, x as shown on the screen. Name it as equation 3. On substituting the values of the first derivative, second derivative, and y in the left hand side of the given differential equation, we get. Simplifying the equation, we can see that, the left hand side of the equation, is equal to the right hand side of the equation. Therefore, the function y, is equal to, e power minus 3x, is a solution, of the given differential equation. Verify that, the function, y is equal to, y equals x plus b sine x, where, a, b belongs to r, is a solution of the differential equation, displayed on the screen. From the question, we have the function, y as a equals x plus b sine x. Name it as equation 1. Differentiating equation 1, with respect to x, we get the first derivative, as displayed on the screen. Name it as equation 2. Again differentiating equation 2, with respect to x, we get the second derivative, as given on the screen. Name it as equation 3. Next, substitute the values of the second derivative, and y, in the left hand side of the given differential equation. Simplifying the terms, we can say that, the left hand side of the given equation, is equal to the right hand side. Therefore, the given function y, equals, y equals x plus b sine x, is a solution of the given differential equation. Verify that, the given function, explicit or implicit, is a solution of the corresponding differential equation, given on the screen. From the question, we have the function, y as the square root of 1 plus x square. Name it as equation 1. Now, differentiate equation 1, with respect to x, as displayed on the screen. Differentiating the terms and simplifying, we get the first derive as. Simplifying further, we get the derivative, as xy by 1 plus x square. Thus, we have verified that, the given function is a solution, of the corresponding differential equation. Verify that, the given function, explicit or implicit, is a solution of the corresponding differential equation, given on the screen. From the question, we have the function, y as the square root of a square minus x square. Name it as equation 1. Now, differentiate equation 1, with respect to x, as displayed on the screen. Differentiating the terms, and simplifying, we get the first derive as. Simplifying further, we get the derivative, as x plus y into dy by x is equal to 0. Thus, we have verified that, the given function, y equals the square root of a square minus x square is a solution of the corresponding differential equation. Conclusion. Thus, we come to the end of our session. I believe that, you are clear about the general and particular solutions of a differential equation. Can you derive the differential equation, from the given general solution? For example, if you know the foci on x-axis, and center at the origin, would you be able to form the differential equation, representing the family of ellipses? Yes, you can form the differential equation, from the general solution. In our next session, let's learn, how can you derive those equations, in detail. Summary. In this lesson, we have learnt that, the solution, which contains arbitrary constants, is called the general solution primitive, of the differential equation. And, the solution free from arbitrary constants, that is, the solution obtained from the general solution, by giving particular values, to the arbitrary constants, is called, a particular solution of the differential equation.